Cavalcade of America, starring Dorothy McGuire, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. Tonight, Cavalcade stars Dorothy McGuire in Betrayal, the love story of a man and a woman who betrayed their country. Peggy Shippen and Benedict Arnold. Now, Betrayal, starring Dorothy McGuire as Peggy Shippen Arnold on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Time, 1778. A ball in British-occupied Philadelphia. A music room in the home of a moderate loyalist, Edward Shippen. His daughter, Peggy, sits at a harp. Beside her, his scarlet coat, bright in the gleam of candelabra, is a handsome British officer. I love the last of fair one, as fair as there was seen. She, Peggy, you haven't answered my question. Andre. Haven't you strayed from your question? Why, well, I beg you, don't stop playing. If you do, my fellow officers will come flooding over here and <laughs> plead you off to dance with them. But, Major Andre, I'm devoted to dancing. Well, let your sisters act the hostesses. Do play on, Peggy. <laughs> Miss Shippen. Why, well, say, Miss Shippen. Oh, see what you've done here. They come like bees well, at Miss you. Miss Shippen, now that you've finished playing, may I suggest there's dancing in the next room? Thank you most kindly, Colonel. But I was about a to dance. A piercing dan party, Miss Shippen, an absolutely piercing Thank party. You. Now, if you could only favor me with a dance. Indeed, sir. Nothing would delight me more, but I believe the Colonel asked. Oh, was it not I, your humble hovering? Captain, who came the very instant your heavenly hands stopped playing to crave the honor. Major Andre, do help. I find myself most grievously pressed to choose between three officers of such impeccable impetulance that I, frankly, gentlemen, am quite confounded. No, gentlemen, a toast. To the miraculous discovery made this winter by His Majesty's troops that there are four graces. Uh -huh. Gentlemen, will you join me? To Miss Elizabeth Shippen, to Miss Sarah Shippen, to Miss Mary Shippen, and to Miss Peggy Shippen, the goddess of them all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Peggy, tonight was the perfect party. What did he say? Why did Major Andre say Hello, Peggy. Oh, Peggy, darling? I'm mad at jealousy. Oh, no. I love a lass of fair one, oh. as fair oh. as there was she. Do stop saying she that, sir, Peggy. She was indeed a rare one. Oh, Another Peggy, will you queen. marry Major Andre? Peggy, tell us truly, what do you feel for Major Andre? Oh, I feel Major Andre is the most sensitive of men. Such a delicacy of perception, a sympathy so tender and refined, far above the crude and average level that... that well, say it, do say oh, it. Oh, I can't. But I'm too happy. I love a nice a fair one, as there was a... Who's that so late? Father. Oh, oh father, father, come in. Come in. We want to thank you for another wonderful boy. Oh, yes, yes father. Oh, I'm so oh, happy. This perfect night, this perfect party. Peggy. Oh, father, come smile. Peggy, I came to say that much as I wish my daughters happy, these extravagant parties will from now on cease. As long as the British remain in Philadelphia, there will be no more entertainment in my house. Oh, Father. Peggy, you are extravagantly thoughtless. Perhaps I've been wrong to indulge you so much. Is it wrong to be happy, Father? Near here at Valley Forge, American soldiers are barefoot this winter. And you are giving parties for the British. Father, is it wrong to be happy? Well, it can't last much longer. The British are going to withdraw. That means the Americans will be back. All right, then, Father. When the Americans come, I'll give parties for them, too. Miss Shippen, do leave off your playing and pay some heed to my question. Your question, sir? Colonel Hamilton, I must hear it before I can heed it. Ever since the British evacuated Philadelphia and we Americans moved in, I've been coming to these parties at your house. And you've been very welcome, sir. But so has every other officer in the American army. And indeed, so it should be. But what I beg to know is, is there one officer more welcome than another? 
Is there, Miss Shippen? I hadn't really thought, sir. Is he a general? Last year, I'm told, it was a major. A British Major Andre. Ah, last year. So long ago. And now, a general. A general with black hair and gray eyes. Oh? Who could that be? Foul temper and brutish ways, they say. Oh, surely I couldn't favor a foul temper and brutish way. He was wounded at Saratoga. Colonel Hamilton, do you mean perhaps... I mean the commander of Philadelphia, General Benedict Arnold. Miss Shippen, is he the most welcome? Were you speaking of the devil, Hamilton? Oh, good evening, General Arnold. Colonel, I believe Mr. Shippen would speak with you in his library. Really, sir? As you go out of this music room, Colonel, close the door. With pleasure, General. Your servant, Miss Shippen. Stop your playing. Stand up. General Arnold, you are most uncivil. Stand up. I like to look at the length of you standing. Stop your playing and stand up. General, in the two months you've been coming here to my father's house, your incivility has grown at every encounter. And now tonight Come I... Come here. Thought... We shouldn't. We shouldn't be alone in this room. General, all my life, no one has ever... Hold your tongue. Now kiss me. You kiss like a frightened girl. General, I... I don't know what to do. Nothing I do seems to please you. You're a woman. Then let me know it. Kiss me. Oh, Peggy, Peggy, you're mine. You're mine. Yes, I am. I am. I am and I always will be. Peggy, what's the matter? Come, finish brushing your hair and tell us. For these many weeks now, you've been restless and moody. What is it? It's anger. Because everyone's so unfair to Benedict Arnold. This Benedict Arnold of yours has a darkness about him. Darker than his hair. And a bitterness. You're jealous of me. Oh, come. I'm jealous of him. Congress is jealous of him. Even, even the British say that Benedict Arnold has the finest military mind in the American army. We don't dispute you. He beat Burgoyne. He alone beat Burgoyne at Saratoga. And they're saying that that was the turning point of the war. We still don't dispute you, Peggy. And now a stupid Congress questions his orders. There's even talk that he might have to stand court-martial. For what? For saving their stupid necks. We don't doubt his talents. It's his temper. He's always criticizing. Congress, the Congress oh. of the war. Stop it! You've all been poisoned against him. You're like Congress. Stop it! Peggy, we can hear you. Congress wouldn't advance him, but they'd advance five idiots. Five idiots below him in rank. Stupid, jealous, bumping, neither. Hush, Peggy, hush. Come in, Father. Come in and scold me. Peggy. Oh, scold me with a rest and slander him. All of you are against him. All of you are against me. My own family is against me. Peggy, dear, don't. No, let her cry it out. Daughter. Daughter, beyond all the objections to temperament that I have made, I have another. Arnold has bought, in anticipation of a certain event, he says... The most elegant country house and estate in Pennsylvania, Mount Pleasant. Indeed. How could he afford it? Indeed. How can he on a soldier's pay? It's for me. Because he loves me. He bought it. Will love pay for it? When you're married, will love pay off the mortgage? Oh, Father, how cruel. The man's credit is worthless. He's dishonest with the public funds. It can't be. Who dares? Who? The Council of Pennsylvania. That's enough. I won't hear any more lies. I love him. Very well. If you cannot be reasoned with, then I'll have to hurt you. Look, this letter. What are you doing with a letter from General Arnold to me? I want you to read this. I don't have to. I know it by heart. Dearest Peggy, on you alone my happiness depends. And will you doom me to languish in despair? Will Peggy, you... I repeat, read this. It is not to you. It doesn't begin, dearest Peggy. It begins, dearest Betsy. What? Yes, ma'am. Dearest Betsy, Father, where did you get this? Read it. Dearest Betsy, on you alone, dear Betsy, my happiness depends. And will you do me to languish in despair? Will Daughter, you... this letter was sent me by a mistress, Betsy Debois, when she heard Benedict Arnold was courting you. I don't believe you. Peggy. 
I love him. Peggy, how can you trust a man like that? I beg you, reconsider before it's too late. I love him. I love his strength, his temper, the flash of his violence. And he loves me, too. In spite of everything, I shall be his wife. I shall be at his side through all his triumphs. And I shall be Mrs. Benedict Arnold. What a lovely sound that name has. Mrs. Benedict Arnold. You are listening to Betrayal, starring Dorothy McGuire on the Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Peggy Shippen of Philadelphia has fallen in love with General Benedict Arnold, the American military governor of the city during the Revolutionary War. Against all advice not to marry this brilliant, erratic soldier facing a court-martial for using his public position for private gain, Peggy turns deaf ears. She and Benedict Arnold are married. (laughs) Meanwhile, at British headquarters in New York... I'm a blossom fair one, as fair as ever seen. She was indeed a rare one. Colonel... Colonel, do you mind? Uh, oh, I, I beg your pardon, General Clinton. I... No, I mean, do you mind singing out the song? I find it rather pleasant. Oh? <laughs> it's a tune we learned in Philadelphia. They don't seem to sing it at all here in New York. She was indeed a rare one, another Sheba. Major Andre, sir. Oh, uh, thank you, Colonel. That'll be all. Yes, sir. Da, 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 da. Good morning, General. You sent for me, sir. Andre these letters over. Yes. For several months now, I've been receiving the most mysterious messages from Philadelphia. Each letter signed Gustavus, and each contains a valuable piece of information which would only be available to one in high command. Mm, Some officer must be deeply disgruntled. And deeply in debt. Yes. I note the stress he puts on the financial arrangement. Andre, I want you to carry on this correspondence with Gustavus. Very well, sir. And if I determine his identity? Then we determine what kindness we ask from him in return for what courtesy he receives from us. Specifically? West Point. Sir? If the fortress at West Point could be delivered into our hands, then the Hudson Valley would open to us. We could split the colonies and thereby convince them of the absurdity of continuing their struggle. What would that be worth to you in pounds, General? It would be worth victory. And victory would be worth... Anything. After the oysters, serve the terrapin. You have that, Miss uh, Yes, Mrs. Arnold. Uh, next, potted woodcock, then venison with seacrest, and oh, the sauce. The last time he was here, General Washington took quite a fancy to our sauce. Peggy, Peggy, where are you, dear? In here, Benedict. Oh, good morning, darling. Go along now, Samson. Uh, Yes. Well, what brought you rushing back home? You're all excited. Peggy, dear, listen. There's something very important you must help me with. Something wrong? Am I spending too much money? General Washington wants to send me into the field. Well, of course he does. You're his best commander. But it isn't what I want. Why are you so stirred? I want the command of West Point. West Point? Listen, Peggy. You can get it for me. Tonight at dinner, you can change Washington's mind. You can change anyone's mind. He likes you. Tell him I'm sick. I'll do nothing of the sort. What do you mean? What are you saying? I mean, I'll do nothing of the sort unless you promise to take me with you. (laughs) Promise. Oh, Peggy, you witch, you lovely witch. Kiss me. I'll take you. Oh, Benedict. We're so happy, aren't we? And West Point will be beautiful in the fall. High over the Hudson... Leaves turning bronze and brazen. Oh, darling, we'll make a holiday of it. We'll make all our life a holiday. General 
General Clinton, Major Andre is here. Sorry to wake you, sir, but this intelligence only now came. Well? I've discovered who's been writing those letters. Our mysterious correspondent, Gustavus, is Benedict Arnold. No. And who do you think is the new commander of West Point? General Benedict Arnold. <laughs> it couldn't be better. We've arranged a rendezvous. Midnight, September 21st. Two miles below Stony Point. Good. At that time, he'll give me the plans of West Point. And we shall complete all arrangements for its surrender. Excellent. Use the utmost caution. I will, sir. I shouldn't like it a bit if they caught you, Andre. You'd be hanged as a spy. You realize that? Yes, sir. Tell me, weren't you a friend of Arnold's wife in Philadelphia? Yes, sir. She was lovely. I adored her. <laughs> Peggy, hmm? you out here? Yes, Benedict. Look, in the moonlight, the Hudson and all the valley are silent. So much at peace. At West Point, one forgets we're at war. It'll be over soon, Peggy. More people than you know are disaffected with the cause of the revolution. They're weary of fighting. There's bickering and petty jealousy on all sides. This will never be a unified country. If... Only you could lead this country to peace. I have such a plan. A plan to end the war quickly. Darling, come here. No, closer. Now kiss me. Now listen. You may not understand the methods I employ. I'm going to have to work this out with the British. Benedict. If I need you, you'll work with me. Won't you, dearest? Won't you? Yes, Benedict. I'll do it for you. I'll do anything for you. May I have coffee, please? And a kipper. Oh, of course. You look tired this morning, Peggy. And you're frowning. I don't like to look at you frowning. I... I was worried about you last night. I was so afraid something might go wrong. Uh, what could go wrong? I had the rendezvous with Andre. I gave him the plan. Benedict, Colonel Hamilton was here this morning to say that General Washington will arrive at West Point today. Yes, we're aware of that. Oh, I see. Um, coffee, darling? Come. General Arnold, excuse me, General, but something's happened. Mighty queer. Well, speak up. Queer in what way? At Tarrytown, sir, one of our patrols caught a Britisher making for White Plains. Dressed poor, but speaking rich. M who was he? Who? Said his name was John Anderson. John Anderson? Yeah. Oh, yes. He's perfectly all right. He had a pass signed by me, didn't he? Yes, sir, but he must have deceived you. He also had all the plans of West Point inside his boot. And his name isn't John Anderson. It's Major John Andre of the British Army. Thank you. That's all. Thought you ought to know, sir. We have all the papers ready to show to General Washington when he arrives. Thank you, that's all. Good day, ma'am. Have my horse saddled. Yes, sir. Benedict, what are you going to do? Escape. The British have the vulture anchored down river. I can make it a border if I leave now. You, you're not taking me with you? Peggy, for my sake and yours, stay here. And face Washington? How can I? Pretend you know nothing of this. Have hysterics. Faint. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. You must not be. You're in this as deeply as I now, yes. Peggy. There's no time left for fear. Mrs. Arnold. Mrs. Arnold, General Washington is here. Mrs. Arnold. She doesn't stir, Doctor. Miss Arnold. Mrs. Arnold. Who are you? It's General Washington, Mrs. Arnold. Mrs. Arnold, I want to tell you, no one holds you responsible or under suspicion in any way. You aren't, General Washington. You've come to hurt me. Mrs. Arnold, your husband is in New York. He has gone over to the British. What? This has been a terrible blow to us all. 
I will help you all I can. Do you wish to join your husband, or do you wish to go home to Philadelphia? I, I, I want Benedict here. I want everything the way it was be, before all this began. Mrs. Arnold, you'll have to choose New York or Philadelphia. Colonel Hamilton will arrange an escort for you. But you cannot stay here. Well, I'll go to my father. Father will understand. You'll know how to straighten it all out and make it all right again. Oh, please, General Washington. I want to go home. To, to Philadelphia. I can't play for you anymore tonight. Well, don't fret, my dear. Oh, ever since I returned to Philadelphia, everywhere I go, people stare me down with hatred. (laughs) I think even my sisters are turning against me. Well, of course they're not, my dear. Today in the park, I I saw a mob burn Benedict in effigy. They yelled traitor. Do you know what that means to me? I helped my husband a hundred ways. I believed he was going to bring us peace. He was going to be our savior, our leader. And now they call him traitor. Daughter, these colonies have been fighting for their freedom. Not for a new set of shackles. That's what Benedict Arnold stood for. I should have seen, but love clouded my eyes. Well, are your eyes clear now? Have you seen what has happened? How the people have rallied together? The sin of your husband has cleared the eyes of all the people. And the sin of his wife? What is that? Come in. Message for Miss Peggy, sir. Oh, Father, could it be from Benedict? Excuse me, Miss Peggy. This is from the Philadelphia Council. Oh. Philadelphia, Friday, October 27, 1780. Taking into consideration the case of Mrs. Margaret Arnold, the wife of Benedict Arnold, and a tainted traitor whose residence has become dangerous to the public safety... We go too far. ...therefore resolve that said Margaret Arnold be advised to depart this state within 14 days and that she do not return to Philadelphia again. Peggy, there, there must be some way to see the council. Well, this must not be. Oh, it I... was inevitable. But you can't go away from us now, I'm... alone. I'm Mrs. Benedict Arnold. Father, say of her... That she loved her husband, and therefore her eyes were clouded. Together, she believed that they could do no wrong. Should the Council of Public Safety ask where she's gone, tell them that now her eyes are cleared, but that she saw the way her life must go. I will follow my husband. My duty is to him. The years ahead will be merciless, but just. And this tragedy, our tragedy, must be taken as a warning. It must never be forgotten. Oh, Father, can you forgive me? Will I ever be forgiven? I have loved all the good things too much to have loved the better. I have just one thing to say. Please buy as many Christmas seals as you can to help fight tuberculosis. Thank you, and good night. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade Betrayal was written by Halstead Wells, was directed by Jack Zoller. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. The part of Benedict Arnold was played by Alan Hewitt. Next week, at Cavalcade time, our star will be the popular Pat O'Brien. Our play, Oliver Wendell Holmes McClanahan.
is an original radio comedy set in the Boston of Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes. This is Ted Pearson speaking. Cavalcade of America comes to you each week from the stage of the Longacre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Dorothy McGuire appears by arrangement with David O. Selznick, producer of the forthcoming picture, Portrait of Jenny, starring Jennifer Jones, Joseph Cotton, and Ethel Barrymore. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.